Hello everyone, welcome to Mo's Kitchen. Today we're going to make chicken tiki masala. This is a very North American style recipe, which what I mean is a very quick and easy recipe. We're not going to toast all the spices and do all the frying. That'll be a different video. This is going to be more of an introduction. Anyways, let's get started. So here I have a bunch of spices, salt, pepper, paprika, cumin, coriander. I'll post it on the website. Now, realistically the way I do it is, I would toast them all and then I would grind them myself. But since it's a quick and easy version, just you can use all the powders and mix them, it's fine. Remember, it's a beginner version. Now I do have some spices that I did grind by hand, and I did have some powder spices here. I'm using a combination, but realistically the best way to go is everything whole, then grind it yourself. Okay, so here I've got two large chicken breasts. They are bone in and skin on. I like the skin. Now realistically it's cheaper to buy it with the bone in and then shred it later yourself, so it's a lot cheaper. You can buy it boneless, skinless, that's up to you. Anyways, dump the spice, get it all over the place. Normally in any need recipe, you'd maybe slice the skin a little bit, you know, get everything in the inside, put some yogurt, marinate it for two hours to even four days. It will tenderize it a lot more. But quick and easy, we don't have the time for this. And you can use anything. You can use fish, beef, frog. But right now we're using chicken because I'm the boss. So to get it in there, then we move on to the next step. So I've got a hot pan on high heat with some oil. It's really hot. I place both of my chickens in there. It's going to be a little bit tricky getting them both in because this is a pretty big chicken, pretty small pan. I kind of miscalculated that, but this is fine. Now, you don't necessarily need to finish cooking them in here. For me, I'm going to just give it a good crust on both sides. Then I'm going to finish cooking it in the sauce. But if you want to be very, very safe about it, finish cooking it in here. If you're new to cooking, I recommend you just finish cooking it in the pan. If you've got the boneless, skinless breast, you can chop it into cubes and fry them a lot quicker. Or you can cook it in the oven for about 20 minutes at 400. It's up to you. Now look at that awesome crust. That's exactly what I need. And you can cook it all the way through on the pan just like this. You just start it at high for about 2 or 3 minutes a side. Then turn it to a medium. Then maybe gradually to low. But um, again, this is all up to you, right? I'm going to remove them. Let them rest for a good 10 minutes. Keep those juices in the pan. And in the meantime, I'm going to go to phase 2. With all that heat in the pan, the crust from the chicken, the flavor, the spices and everything, it's a great way to saute some onions. On medium to medium high heat, toss in one onion, the good pinch of salt to draw out the moisture and develop the flavor. I'm going to brown it for at least 20 minutes. You can go 10 if you want. This is going to be a little bit up to you how you want to do it. Let's get it going. Now this part's for all the Italians in the room. We're going to add in the garlic. That's right. Cook it for maybe a minute or two because the heat's very high. You do not want to cook this too much and it will brown pretty quickly. So get it in there, stir it in there, give it a minute or two and you're good to move on to the next step. Believe it or not, tomatoes are a very big part of the dish. You're going to throw in two to three nice tablespoons of tomato paste. I'm going to stir it in there just for a few minutes, maybe two or three minutes on medium heat. Just get that raw edge off and kind of enrich the dish in itself. There we go. That should do it. Now the tomato sauce. Just dump it in there. Hey, whoops. Oh no. That's definitely not part of the dish. You want to get that out right away. Don't put that in your stock pot either. That goes right in the recycling bin. Anyways, this dish varies basically on the tomatoes. Usually you want to use the freshest and best you can. Or obviously in this country, canned San Marzano's. But in this case, again, quick and easy, regular tomato sauce. Now as you can see there, we can't really see it, but the bottom of your pan that had all that, you know, buildup, that's flavor. This will get rid of it. Also, sometimes people add milk or cream to enrich the dish. I'm going to add coconut milk. I like what it brings to the party. So here's a pro tip. Do not pour from the sky like I did. Pour it closer to the pan, that way it doesn't splatter all over. And use a bigger size pan. Mine was kind of small, you know. So the next time, use a bigger pan because mine kind of dripping all over the place, but you know, it still works. So on medium-low, just simmer it for like 5 or 10 minutes, that way the sauce gets hot and you can dump the chicken inside of it. Here's a super quick rice demo. So I'm going to put it on top of rice. You don't really need anything special. I had some oil on medium heat for a minute. Then I'm just dumping in my rice, just like that. So get it all in there. You gotta wash your rice first, which I already did. Then you want to stir it around for about a minute. Then you want to add in some water. You're going to add salt, but that's optional considering this is going to be a bland rice to go with some very flavorful chicken and sauce. Now, you want to simmer like this till the rice kind of reaches the same level as the water. It might look tough to see in the video, but when you stir it, I'll show you what I mean. See, the water reached the rice level, and when you stir it around, you can kind of see the rice moving a lot. So now, lit up, lowest setting for about 10 minutes. After that, let it rest for another 10 minutes. Sauce has been simmering away for 10 minutes. You just want to really warm up the food. So, if it's fully cooked, just keep it in there for 10 minutes. If it's a little bit raw and you want to finish it, keep it in there for at least half an hour. Or until it's done, you gotta make sure it's done. So here I have my nice rice, which I eat pretty much every day of my life, but different kinds. I'm gonna put it on the bowl. I like using a square plate for this because it's wider, it's got more room for surface. There we go. Now for the best part, we're gonna add in the chicken. 
There we go. Be generous with the chicken. Really, one breast can serve two, sometimes three people. Depends on the rice per chicken ratio you serve. Now for some extra flavor, let's spoon on some of that nice sauce to coat the chicken and the rice that we worked so hard to get. There we go. By the way, you can freeze this for three months. You can use it, you know, days after. This is a great sauce. Now let's go in for the taste. I love rice. I love chicken. And hey, Indian food always good to eat. Let's see, can I get it? Oh, this actually tastes so good. I wish you could all try this. But one thing would go really good with this: lime time. So that's it, guys. My quick and easy chicken tiki masala. Hope you enjoyed the recipe. I'm gonna post a much more complicated version of it later, with grinding and toasting the spices, making your own mix. You're gonna all love it. Anyways, visit my website mos-kitchen.blogspot.ca for this recipe and a lot of others. And as always, enjoy.